What's going on? What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Love at the Lockup. This is Love at the Lockup, season five, episode thirty-four. Are you mentally how mentally stable are you? Why would you ask somebody that question? Somebody that you don't know. Why would you ask somebody that question? But anyway, we get into it. This episode didn't really give us much. Okay, honestly, it kind of dragged. All right. The only thing that we got out of there is that we got a new person, and I honestly just want to talk about her. Let's just go down the line first of all. True and Shantae, cut it off. Cut it off. Shantae, that man been playing you ever since you brought him that jumpsuit. Okay, that's just what it is. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. And honestly, I don't even feel bad. You want to know why? Because this man been up in prison for 13 years and you expect him to come out and to be 100% faithful to you and to want to be an instant daddy, to want to be an instant husband and to not do whatever he want to do. The man been locked up and pent up and in a box for 13 years and I'm not taking up for him, okay? I'm just applying logic. But see, let's get on you, True. Your ass playing games. And for that preview for next week, talking about some, you think you ain't use me? You ain't want to use me? Use you for what? Use you for what? You just got out of jail. You ain't got nothing. Unless somebody hid some money away or whatever, you ain't got nothing. So what exactly is she using you for, a dick? <laughs> I mean, all right. <laughs> a dildo can do that. She could do that. You know what I'm saying? Fingers can do that. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. What's going on? What's going on? I said, you know, Shantae, honestly, you weren't ready to be in a relationship either. And if you're going to be in a relationship, I'm pretty sure that being with a prison person that's behind a cell that you don't see in real life uh, throughout that time that you are courting. Okay, that is so old. That's so old. Um, Yeah, it's not going to work. It's not going to work because Shantae comes off as the type of person that it's easier to talk to a person through text message, through email or whatever type of communication they probably was talking to on when he was in prison and the fact that he she only was send what pictures and not come up there and see him and not do the little facetime he calls that they probably got out there yeah she the type of person that needs to meet somebody like i'm walking down the street and hey shawty hey miss lady how you doing I'm talking to you. It's beautiful. What you talking about? What you looking around for? Anybody else out here? <laughs> oh my God, you talking about me? Yeah. That's what she need. Okay? Because she need that person to see her instantly and to see if that um connection is going to be there and they can go out. Because then she can get all that fluttering and all that stuff out of there and then eventually probably become comfortable. I don't know. You should have known, true, that something was up with it. That this wasn't going to be what you wanted it to be when she wouldn't come up there to see you and she ain't had no real excuse. And then going to try to use that. I'm just saying, ladies, if you ever got somebody that you're talking to that's up in jail, make sure you come up there and you see them. Because, I mean, shit can happen or whatever. You can build that bond, that connection and all that stuff. Don't expect him to get out and, and instantly want to be in a relationship with you when you don't come up there and see him. I mean, honestly, he do got a point. But at the same time, nigga, you knew exactly what it was. First of all, she ain't white. Second of all, you ain't got nothing, and she put in the bill. That's just all that it is, okay? Honestly, for real, for real, I'm not even going to lie. I just do not feel like True is really attracted to Shantae. Let's just put it there. And that's why I feel like he playing games. And I don't want to say that his sister is playing games with him um, and, and, and doing it with him to, to Shantae, but it's given that. It's given that. Because why are you in cahoots with all of the stuff that he's doing? You picking him up, and I get it, that's your family, that's your brother, you ain't seen to me in years, whatever, you want to spend time, but you as a woman, it's a respect thing. You wouldn't want your nigga picking, uh, uh, just leaving out the house with a family member or a female friend or uh, somebody else or whatever, a woman friend, let me not say female. Girl, you do, you won't want that. You won't want that. And nobody tell you nothing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's just messed up, and it just feels like you in on it, and you want them to break up because you keep on asking, are you sure, are you sure, and all of this stuff. And I'm just like, hmm, 
And then you finna set him up with your friend who already had a thing for him back in the day. Now, how was it your friend never saw him? Well, never, never mind. He been in jail. He been in jail. There's that. There's that. And so, you know, you just contributed to the problem. And I just feel like you fake and you phony your shit because you were smiling all up in Shantae's face when y'all was finna get ready to pick that man up. And y'all was having all these cute conversations and meaning that you was calm and collected and you weren't trying to come for her throat. You was asking the right questions. But now you are assisting in breaking this lady heart. You know she's sensitive as hell and she dumb as hell. Let me tell you something, Shantae. You up there talking to that man and saying that he's stupid. You stupid. You are real stupid for getting in this relationship, doing all of this stuff. That man said, um, we can be together, but not together. He just want a friends with benefit type of situation. That's all that I got out of that. Because he said, listen, um, I mean, I don't want to say that we together, we married, but we could be like dating and just going with the flow. And honestly, I just feel like, you know, I ain't trying to get me. Baby, at the end of the day, he basically said, I'm about to see other bitches and I'm just going to use your house because I need to be at your house for parole. That's all. Didn't offer to put no payment on nothing, but that's all. And I said, child, Shantae, you better than me. I don't know what your problem is. That man basically said, the only thing that you're good for right about now is to be my friend um, and, and, and to room and board me. That's it. You should have left that Airbnb as soon as he said that. You should have left that Airbnb as soon as he said that. Okay? that That's all I got. Shantae, you you about to break your own heart because you ain't have to put yourself in this situation. You really don't. And then he talked about, so I still want to come to Independence and I want to go over there and I want to see the kids. See my kids for what? We ain't in no relationship no more. Okay? Fuck all that. Bullshit. Meanwhile, we get to, let me get this little girl out the way. Latrice. Is it Latrice? Latricia, Letitia, baby Keith, Keith ain't getting out. See, Letitia, um, Letitia, you you did all of that. You did all of that. And the other day, I think in the other review, I was so confused as to why you got all his people over there and how come if it's an immediate release, um, they never said what day or anything like that. He didn't really get a call. She didn't get a call from his lawyer. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, right? And so Girl, come to find out, I think they was on the phone already talking about firing his paralegal. And then she get a phone call from the jail because, well, actually, she had to call up there because she got um this this thing left on her doorknob from the prison or whatever. She called up there asking about his release. And Miss Lady on the other end said, listen, I don't know what it is and I don't know who told you anything. But on his books and when I'm looking at his paperwork, ain't nothing in his file saying that he got immediate release or that he even qualified for that. OK, what I feel like you need to do. She was like, oh, my God. So what are you, what is this happening and why would that happen? And listen, I don't know what, ma'am. All I can tell you is what I see. And what I see is that he ain't getting out. So what I will suggest to you is you talk to your lawyer, your your, your paid lawyer, or we can get you your public defender. I said, damn. <laughs> Mama was a player. She said, listen, I'm not a lawyer. You need to talk to that person. Now, see, basically what I got out of that is the lawyer slash paralegal was supposed to file the junctions or file the motions to try to get him out on immediate release. And either he did it or he didn't do it. And I feel like he said he did it, but he did it because it's not in the fact. And I just want to know what's going on. Like, are you just taking the money and running with it and playing with these people and not getting the results that they want? Girl, that's some foul stuff. What is going on? And you did all of that. You did all of that and had your baby up there <clears throat> so ready for her. I'm ready for my daddy to come home, girl. And speaking of daddies, okay, speaking of daddies, whew, Zariah, Zariah, we're just going to call her Zariah, okay? That's what we're going to come down to. Zariah, let me tell you something. That is not godly. That is not godly, okay? You up there, oh, I just was wondering what his penis was like. I wondered what his dick was like. You know, I was scared that it might be small because he said it was going to be small or whatever. But then when he put his pants down and I see that thing, <laughs> it's big. It's big, girl. It's big and it's good and everything. I was like, damn, bitch. 
I, the PK kids, I'm telling you, them PKs, them preacher, they be the biggest freaks, okay? I said, damn. So now, you know, she didn't have her time with him and everything, and she enjoyed it. He enjoyed it. She takes it upon herself to want to drop some news about his mother coming through, okay? And then she going to stay with them. Stay with them. Stay with them at her place. I said, what? Miss Khan? Okay, I said, uh-uh. What's cool? Or you ain't tell me nothing about this. That's how Troy was feeling. Because Troy and his mother does not have the best relationship. I think he said at one point, like around when he was five years old, she just dropped him off somewhere, probably at a family member house or something, and never came back and got him. And I think he had to go into the foster care system. And then at one point, his aunt got him. And his father got him at one point. He was just being passed around because the mama said, I can't do this and just dropped his ass off. Mama got a little bit of alcohol issue or whatever. And because of that, that's why the relationship hasn't been so good. And he felt some type of way because in all of the seven years that he was locked up, mama never showed up and not one time. And so I would have felt some type of way if my significant other reached out to one of my family members that I'm, no, I'm not talking to and I'm not in a good space for, even if it's for, you know, good intentions because you want to bridge that gap and to mend that relationship, don't do nothing like that for me. Please don't do that. Because if I haven't reached out to that person, I'm not ready to reach out to that person if I need to reach out. You know what I'm saying? I, I Don't do that to me. Don't do that to me because then I'm going to be mad at you. Even though I know you're coming from a good place, I'm going to be mad at you and it's going to make me feel the type of way. Don't force me to do nothing. Um, that same thing. Let me ask y'all this. So Simone Bow's mama had came out and she said she wanted to connect with Simone, but she going to leave it up to Simone to get in contact with her, even though she got Simone's uh, number. And, you know, she was adopted because her mama was on crack. Oh, well, her mama was on drugs and alcohol. Okay. Now I've been seeing people that were saying like, you need to have compassion for the parents of the 80s and the early 90s, whatever, because they got caught up in the crack addiction and, you know, um, alcoholism and all that stuff, whatever. Mm. I don't have sympathy like that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was a choice that you made. That was a choice that you made and you knew the consequences of it, especially depending on when you started. You knew the consequences of it. And even if it wasn't, and you had to go all throughout it, that you the one that left the kid. You the one that gave the kid up and had to have the kid taken away from you. So I feel like it is the parent's responsibility to reach out. I'm not going to reach out. I didn't abandon you. You abandoned me. Whatever the reason, whether it's legitimate or not, you abandoned me. I'm the child still. That's how I feel. How y'all feel about it? Anyway, moving on from that. The riot, uh, she wound up taking you know, Troy back to her house and meeting her son. And he, as soon as he saw, Daddy, I said, Daddy. So Zariah basically said, ain't no contact between the actual father with the son. He didn't even sign the birth certificate. Um, She don't get no child support. She don't get no help. She don't get nothing from the man. Basically, he's a ghost. And now you got this boy calling, your, uh, 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 calling him dead, this new man. And I mean, I guess they've been talking for, she, I think he said something since the boy was five years old and he's now 11. I will say it was cute to see him, you know, being, oh my God, Didi. But I still felt some type of way. I still felt some type of way. I don't know. I don't know. And I have to keep on reminding myself, they actually are married. So, but at the same time, it's just like, uh, whatever. But at least right now, it seems like a positive role model, male figure in his life. But at the same time, I just, y'all know how I feel about having these in, these people that just come out of jail around these kids and then having them call them daddy and all this stuff and wanting them, girl, please, I, I just don't, but all right. Moving on from that, you know, um, Troy went over there and he did pick up his mama. His mama did apologize or whatever, because he said, how come you never came and saw me, bitch? And she was like, you know, um, she got into some shit. Alcohol got the best of her again. And she's just trying to change her ways. And, you know, she's tired of fighting people and all that stuff. I said, yeah, I mean, if you showing that you're going to change, I can give you something of a leeway of a chance. But if you just, you know, talking out your ass, I can't. I can't. We're going to have to let that go. All right. But, um, yeah, he wanted to build that relationship. 
And that's basically what was going on with Troy. Troy, you ain't got you ain't got no restrictions on you because you out here just driving all willy nilly. You got your license. Wow. Okay. Because when Shantae, uh, 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 what's his name? True tried to drive Shantae's car and Shantae said no. Shantae, let me tell you something. Also, let me get back on you for a second because I don't want to, again, I hope it's not, I hope I'm equally getting at both of them because both of them are dumb. All right. And I feel like both of them are using each other for something. She using it for companionship and dick and he using her for grooming board. That's just what it is. Because I guarantee you, he's going to cheat. He's going to cheat if he hasn't already. But, you know, my feelings probably would have been hurt too if he would have said somebody talk about something. Well, you boring. You bitch, yes. I'm a homebody. And I don't even understand. Like, Shantae, did you tell him that? And if you did tell him that, true, you knew what it was. So now all of a sudden, when she told you what it was, and then you finally see what it was, you acting surprised and you getting in your feelings or whatever. And Shantae, I know that bitch is making you mad and getting why you got such an attitude. Everything that man do irritates you. You keep on calling him stupid. You call him idiot and everything. Do you really want that man? I'm so confused. I am so confused. Let me find out my spouse is calling me names like that. Bitch. <laughs> Fuck about it here, okay? I'll probably not talk to you for a little bit. And then I come back and be like, and what was said? Okay. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, Kim and Joey. They did what they did. And let me tell you, what, what is going on with this? I don't want to use condoms type of thing. They had sex all night and they didn't use condoms. He literally just got out of prison. Okay. I ain't saying nothing happened, but I want to have precautions. And yes, I know people say that they give them like tests or whatever in prison, but still. Okay. Like put a condom on. You got two young kids. One of them still probably in diapers. He's still sucking on a pacifier. All right. And you up here taking risks by fucking this man raw, okay? And I'm just like, child, all right. And my neighbors are outside arguing again. But there's that. And I'm just like, you know what? I, I, she going to the store, letting him pick up. Uh, uh, Christmas presents for the boys or whatever. It came out to three hundred and sixteen dollars and some cents, and I'm just like, what? And see, what bothers me with this whole situation is y'all are talk about how, oh, I'm only making this. I'm only a, a teacher's assistant making fifteen dollars an hour, but yet you doing all of this stuff for this inmate and you allowing him to go up in there. This, this what? Y'all be putting y'all financial freedom and y'all financial stuff on in, in jeopardy for somebody that ain't ain't even worth it. No, I can never. I can never. And then you get over there and you, de you de see the kids and they excited for the most part, but it's just awkward. You know, his mama showed up and all of that. And um, I, I just feel like they going to, Joey going to give up a, a time and it's not going to be a good one. It's not going to be a good one. Oh, I had to drink some turmeric ginger tea. Cherry to Joe's is really, really good. Okay. And I had to, I had to put nothing in. I just hooked it up with the regular stuff and it tastes really good. Cause sometimes, you know, you got to put a little, little dazzle, a little razzle dazzle up in some teas or whatever. So it can be so not so bitter or whatever, but it's cute. It's cute. I like it. But um, anyway, moving on from Joey and them, um, who else was on here? And speaking of kids or oh, oh, sex without condoms. Did y'all hear that shit about Julian and Brittany? Is her name Brittany? Julian and Christine. They were stealing out the Walmart and they both got arrested. <laughs> Somebody tagged me in a post on TikTok and the mugshot and everything. Julian was standing there like this. <sighs> Ain't this about a bitch? He just looked wore out. I said, oh my God. Christine really then took him down that path. Julian, you really rather die. You are that easy to be manipulated. Damn. Now you got a little bit of a record. You feel like a bad boy now, huh? You feel like a bad boy. All right. <laughs> Family that do crime together, stay together. I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Would y'all let that be the end of it, Julian? We don't need you to be doing drugs too. I I'm just, I'm just. Because she was up in that confession with that meth mouth. Okay, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Um, No offense, but that's just what it is. And the last couple that I want to talk about or that we saw because we got a new one. And her name is Bianca and her man is Daniel. 
Bianca is 23 years old and Dengue is 31. Now let me tell you this. It just feels really he's gonna he's he's gonna run over her. He's gonna run over her, and it could be one of those situations where she's young and I can manipulate the hell out of her. I'm just getting that tease, and she's giving that from me, or from her, not from him. Because we barely heard him because he's still locked up. But from all that we saw about Bianca, Bianca is naive as hell. She probably got to be the the, 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 the the most, I should say, the most naive person and, and, and blind person on this, on this whole series. Because she speaks like she's not, you can tell that she's not mature. She talks about situations as if it's in a fantasy type of way and it's all going to come true and everything we don't there's no no worries whatsoever she's just going to let it go let it go with the flow and all of that okay whatever somebody tells me i'm going to believe so she's 23 years old i believe she's down there in florida or something like that and um she's been talking to daniel for the past eight months they are engaged how did you get engaged in eight months <laughs> You don't know the person. And that person is in jail. Get the fuck out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Man, 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 it just made my voice go, get the fuck out of here. I'm mad. Like, what's going on, Bianca? You do not deserve it. It's like, girl, Bianca seems like the type of person that you can get to do anything. You could tell her that the sky is green, even though she see that that sky blue as hell. Blue as hell. And she'd be like, you right. Look at that green speck right there. I see that. She the one that can get easily put into these cults and stuff. Okay? She's just that type of bitch. You know, she gives off that. And I'm just like, girl, don't you... Uh, and she, I know the friend just be like, she gonna do what she wanna do, but damn, my friend is just really, really stupid at this point. She's really, really naive. So she's about to go to... I think he's at Arizona. Now, he's supposed to begin now, and when he gets out, he has to go to a halfway house, Right? He don't want to stay at the halfway house. And she said, well, if he can't come out here, then I'm going to go where he's at. So if that means packing up my things and going all the way down to Arizona to a place I've never been before, that's what it is. And leaving my whole family and my friends and my whole life behind, that's what's going to happen. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to ask her friend about a scar on her neck. She was like, oh my God, how's my scar? Can you see it? I said, girl, we want to know. Cause she was like, cause I'm, I'm still like a little bit of insecure about my scar and everything. And I said, baby, let me tell you something. We wouldn't have known about it had you not pointed out. That's the same thing that I'd be doing. I'd be like, damn, please don't be doing this. And then y'all be like, as we ain't even know shit about it until you said something about it. Well, that's exactly what she did. Girl, I did not notice it was a scar on her neck until she pointed it out. And ever since then, I kept looking at her neck like, huh. The sky looked kind of different on certain angles or whatever. That's her doing. Okay. I just said, all right. It's messed up how she got the scar. She was out one night, a friend or whatever, wanted to take her home. And, you know, she didn't know that the, the, the lady was drunk and they got into a car accident. Um, wind up getting hurt real bad. Her neck got splashed. I think she broke her back and all of that stuff. Mind you, this was in the past eight months, eight or nine months. So when you're supposed to be healing, you up here getting on prison websites. And she said, hell yeah, I got on the websites because I wanted to connect with some of the uh, prisoners who actually had DUIs or whatever, just so I can understand what in the trauma bonding is going on. What is happening? And so then I got with Daniel and he just got me through everything and, you know, this and this and this. And I said, child, because that's literally what she is, a child. OK, because who does this? Who does this? I said, girl, wake up and get into reality. That man is about to drain you. Because listen, she said, there was a sediment. I cannot speak about the details of the accident. And I cannot speak about whether or not I got a settlement or how much I got in the settlement. Just know that it's a lot and I'm living comfortably. Oh, also, Daniel knows about it too. You can tell the inmate, but you can't tell us. And you told him the exact amount. He just came up and you don't even realize it. You his fiance now? He about to drain that shit. I just want you to know, Bianca. So don't come back on Life After Lockup or don't come back next year talking about some his men that took me and I really thought that I could trust him. Who told you to do that? 
Why? Girl, Bianca is just one of those that is just like, you mean to tell me you really not going to wake up and not see what's going on? She said, no, girl, I'm going to just let it go and happen the way that it needs to happen. And if it's supposed to happen that way, then that's just what's going to go down. I said, oh, my goodness. This girl is just, oh, she just really, 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 really dumb. I, I, I don't get it. And I hate to call people dumb like that, but her own friend was just telling her, like, are you sure about this? I, I feel like she's making a stupid move, but, you know, she's not going to listen. He gets on the phone with the guy because this fool said, when he get out, he ain't staying in no halfway house. Andres, that's, his, that's the friend name, was talking to Bianca about it. He was like, uh, he can't do that because then he's going to jeopardize his own freedom and they can lock his ass back up. He got on the phone with him and he brought it up and he said, listen, you do things your way, I'm going to do things my way, okay? And that's just what it is. So you are getting with an inmate who is about to get out, about to be paroled to a halfway home and doesn't want to follow the rules and about to risk going back to jail and finishing out the rest of his season uh, uh, sentence because he literally is on camera saying that he's not staying at the halfway house and he's going to do whatever the hell it is that he want to do. Baby, Bianca. Bianca, that type of bitch that's going to, um, if, if 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 somebody give her meth to do, she'll do it. She'll be like, be like, just try it. It looks like Pop Rocks. And she'll be like, oh, I like Pop Rocks. I mean, it don't really taste like it, but you know, I get it. That's what she going to do. Okay? And I'm just like, girl, where's your mama at? Where's your daddy at? Where's your grandmother at? You don't have a praying grandmama in the home. You really don't. Because why are you doing this? You about to get, you about to lose all of that set of it. You want to know what that remind me of? Uh, remember the uh, the other girl, she was living in the trailer home. You know, the little updated modern trailer that she went and brought. And she had got into some type of accident or something like that. And she had won a whole bunch of money. It was on life, doing, love doing lockup. And uh, she was about to get married to her boy. And once he got out, oh, they broke up. Oh, they broke up too. She ain't with him no more because he was playing games as well. And we was like, bitch, we told you. This is exactly what Bianca reminded me of. That girl. Um, and they both was Caucasian. I don't know what the honestly, that don't even real that don't even mean nothing. Okay. I probably just really want to say that. It don't even mean nothing because everybody on this show is being done when it comes to money. Y'all are sending these inmates money, thousands of dollars that y'all could be using, especially the ones that have kids. Y'all could be using them on the kids' school supply, the kids' clothes, the kids' toiletries and everything else. And you're going to send that money to goddamn inmate 4787. What? Are you kidding me? And Bianca don't give a fuck. Thank God she ain't got no kids. But baby, she got on that phone with his mom and his daddy. And the mama was cute. And the mama, you know, they, she was real nice to her, right? Baby, the daddy get on the phone, and he was like, how mentally stable are you? She got offended as hell, okay? Now, listen, if I was her, I would have got offended too, okay? But at the same time, I think daddy was asking a question because he wanted to know, who in a right man would do the shit that you about to do? You can't be mentally stable doing something like this. And then the part that got me was she waited until the camera crew comes up. And she's on camera to go back to the spot where she had the accident at, at the airport. And she was like, oh, my God, I can't do this. I don't know why I can't do this. I need to go. I said, ain't nobody telling you to go there. What in the world? <laughs> I, I was so confused, y'all. I was just like, girl, you are dramatic. And at this point, Bianca is about to be putting on for the cameras. I, I just, I don't think I buy anything that she's saying right about now. She just gives me, as soon as that camera turns on, I'm about to put on the show and I'm about to work for this chat. That's just what it's giving me right about now. Um, but if this is really her, Bianca is in a world of trouble, okay? She is in for a time and not a good one, just like everybody else. Anybody else happened on this episode? We got Keith and Letitia. <laughs> she got egg on her face. You know what? I kind of laughed at that too because, you know, I just don't like her. Something about her is just really off-putting to me. Um, Shantae and True, break that shit up. Break that shit up, girl. Let me tell you something. Y'all be holding on to stuff, and I had to learn this myself too. Y'all hold on to stuff too much. You got somebody that's out here not giving you what you need, giving you what you want, giving you what you desire, and you are willing to settle just because of what? Just because of what? To say that you got somebody? 
but yet you, 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 you're in a relationship, but you're alone. You're alone. What's the point of being alone in a relationship? Y'all supposed to be together. And you're supposed to feel like everything's all right. You settling and you sad as shit. Get the fuck up out of it, okay? Because your soulmate and the person that you're supposed to be with is out there waiting on your ass to wake the fuck up and get up out of there. I say all this shit right. Single as fuck. Where's mine? I don't know. Anyway, anyway, you want to know one thing that I won't do, though? I ain't getting on no goddamn prison website. Anyway, I see y'all later. Y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode. But uh, Julia and Christine... You want to know what it reminded me of? I'm sorry. I keep on talking like I'm in, the, in this. You remember when Nene's son, Bryson, is it Bryson or Brand? Whichever one, the older son, Bryce, when he um got caught stealing razors, like shaving razors at a um, Walmart, and I think it was like the cheap ones too. That's what it gave me when I heard the story about Julian and Christine and when I seen his mugshot. <laughs> It ain't funny, but it is funny. Okay. Um, but anyway, you guys enjoy the rest of y'all nights and have a great, oh, a great, great weekend. I got the weekend off. Oh, you guys enjoy yourself and I'll see you later. Peace. All right.